It's me, Nim Sony. Welcome back to another streaming video, um, uh, to the streaming studio even. Uh, today's video is sort of a big one, but also a small one. Um, unfortunately, the amount of stuff I've actually worked on in the week is not exactly going to take long to show, <laughs> but it was it was necessary work. I've actually spent a lot of time throughout the week uh, working on this uh, on this project. I'm working on a number of things as well uh, that are showing in this project, but they're not for this project, not necessarily. Um, so, uh, Toby, if you want to move over to that side. Um, so you'll notice actually immediately that something's changed. The room looks a little bit different. Um, there's also a little bit of weirdness going on with my chair. Uh, the character body does not seem to sit on the chair. And in fact, there's a little bit more weird weirdness going on with the chair in a moment. Um, also, the lighting seems to have changed but the room in itself has also changed. And that's because of something uh, that's behind the scenes and behind the camera. And we're gonna have a look at all of that in a moment. Um, so what I've been working on is upgrading this uh, this thing and rewriting the whole system properly uh, in order to work the way that I intended it to work, right? So we are talking about, um, we are talking about the proper, proper stuff in order for it to, to work at a, at a stream level, right? So reliability, rewriting all the code to make it work uh, the way I wanted it to, not just the temporary way that I'd already done it. Um, so uh, that meant understanding a few structures of the of the thing that I wanted to build. And uh, in, in essence, that meant writing a bunch of state machines. Uh, now, essentially what a state machine is, is um, it's like the, the animation systems in Unity are a state machine. You literally take one state uh, where functionality happens and then you have a transition state which, which moves between one state and another and within the transition functionality happens, it ends the state that you are in, functionality happens for the ending of that state and then the new state that you're in has uh, now starts up. I've actually built this into a sort of layered level of str <laughs> my, my camera tracking there, a little bit wobbly, but uh, a layered level of structures um, for this for this project. Uh, let me name them for you and you'll understand what they are. So the first one, which is a global one, is the room. Now, uh, unfortunately, I haven't got multiple rooms yet. So that's something I can't show because I haven't really written any program programming for that. But the next level down is something I call area. An area is uh, is a section within the room. So we are currently in one unity scene uh, wherein this acts as a room, right? So this acts as one big room. And uh, within that room, there are different areas. I can switch between the areas and um, Within those areas, so again, this is how the layered state machines work. Within those areas, I have seating positions. Now seats are not necessarily uh, sitting down seats uh, like they are right now, like the one I'm wearing now, uh, wearing, <laughs> like the one I'm sitting in right now. Um, uh, but seats are actually just positions where within the world there where I can stand and uh, be placed. Now within each of those seats is a set of IDs for the cameras the camera positions that are available per area. So for this area, for example, we've got camera one, which I just pressed for no reason, um, even though we're already in camera one. We've got camera two, we've got camera three, which shows, um, so we've got the, the actual little uh, camera screen down here. I won't start it up because it's got uh, it's got a video playing on there. Um, <laughs> just, it, it's actually just me, uh, right? So it's the video from my last video, right? Um, and that's just, just to show you a little, a little different area. Uh, and then we've got camera four, which is mainly for the green screen, right? So there we go. Uh, the green screen has been upgraded. I've actually rebuilt the entire level structure. Everything you see has been rebuilt except for the table and the tubby cat, of course. Um, he still has his, his um, customizations. So he still has these uh, tubby customizations. And of course, I still have my tubby customizations. Uh, not so tubby ones, of course. There we go. We've still got the same ones as uh, as last week or the week before. It's been it's been a while. Uh, I've been working hard on this on this thing. Uh, now, as my, as I was mentioning, um, so those are the three the four cameras that you can see. There's actually more cameras in this area, but those IDs are not assigned to this seat. Instead, when I hold the X key, you can see there's actually a second seat down there. 
seat number one and seat number two. Now the point of this, and, and the reason I wrote like a layered state machine system, is so that I could smooth out the transitions between every single thing I do. So of course you can see already that when I move my hands out of tracking, so these are not tracking anymore, they do smoothly sort of reposition themselves and then they come back nice and smoothly. So that's been that's been working, I've been working on that uh, just as part of the functionality of the character body, which I've, again I've rewritten and there's a reason for rewriting it, which is of course the seat system. So let's press seat two and we'll see immediately how this works. Ooh. It's brilliant. It's a smooth transition. Now, you'll notice that the chair over there is still rotating based on my head. Uh, that's because I haven't upgraded it to my new um, seat based systems system. Um, yeah, seat systems is what I've called it. So basically, these are, are mechanics within the game world, within the world, uh, which are running only while the seat is active. Uh, and I also have this going on for the entire area. So while, the, while you're in, in one area, a bunch of systems are active. A bunch of lights are active as well. So these lights behind me, they aren't active once I move out of this area. Uh, but what I was talking about earlier was, of course, the cameras. So now you've got actually a, a, a new fifth camera, which is not actually available on the other seat because it would be a pointless camera, right? So it's a set of cameras assigned to this area, but a bunch of IDs for each of the seats allowing you to select the cameras. So now this is camera one. If I go to camera two, you can see actually that there's a little bit more of the game world in this room, right? So there's a, there's some more areas going on outside of what you could see before. Um, so the, the entire world has, has been rebuilt from scratch. But as you can see, this is now camera two, right? And then we've got camera three, which is similar to the one before, and you can actually see the screen at the same time, right? And that allows me to switch from cam uh, from seat one to seat two while still remaining in this sort of camera view. So this is still camera three, but my third camera in seat number two is a little bit extended and a little bit sort of to the left side while still showing the viewpoint there. So it's very, very useful. You'll notice that the camera immediately zooms over to the original, to the, to the seat specific camera as well, um, once I switch seat, right? And again, it's completely smooth. So here, as I jump over to seat number two, it's completely smooth. And you can see I still get tracking. So if I want to lean, lean my head to the right here, woo, you can see it stays leaning, right? I still have tracking while I'm jumping. So I can keep my hands moving blah, 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 while I'm jumping, right? <laughs> it's, it's all advanced and, and all of that good stuff. Now, of course, if I move my hands out, you'll see that the fingers aren't animating yet. Uh, still a lot of work to do. But other than that, the whole body just sort of looks really, really nice, right? And the hands are slightly moving just a little bit there, just a little bit, right? But of course, when they're tracking, it looks much better, right? Now, here's the thing. I just pressed the Z key just now and showed something a little bit outside of the viewpoint. So if I hold the key now, you'll see there are two arrows pointing on the, on the right and left side. Or left and right side it's weird for me to say right and left um, and those are the area controls now i actually thought of some other way of managing area movement because obviously jumping between areas would look a little bit awkward it's a little bit of a wide jump to jump from here to a massively different place in the game in the game world in the room um, so i thought okay i need to have something a little bit nicer a little bit smoother something that will be easy to work with and easy to make Tubby do that as well. Now, of course, Tubby could very easily just sort of run between areas, but um, I don't really, I don't really want to do that. I want, I want things to be always on screen kind of stuff, or at least always within a very close area. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't upgraded Tubby to this new system, so Tubby can just walk around in this area here, little Tubby, Tubby, Tubby. Um, but for me, it does mean. Uh, off we go. Now what what I did here is something I call the um, the bubble. So it's a bubble transition. So let's let's have a look here. I press Z. You can see I can go left or I can go right. I'm gonna go right. Woo! <laughs> I love it. I have been messing around with this for so long. <laughs> This is this is just fun. So here's my super transitions, um, right? So these are these are between areas, and again, 
you can see here, I still have multiple seats within this area and multiple cameras to match, right? So here's camera one. Camera two in this case, while I'm standing up, is actually what camera one is for seat number one. So you can see it doesn't transition at all when I, when I jump over to the seat number one. Uh, so here we go, we'll jump over and you can see the transition happens. I've got camera one here, camera two, we've got this. Camera three is directed onto the screen and camera four, oh, not uh, not jump seat four. Uh, camera four gives me both the screen mostly and then and the body here. And that's very, very useful because if, uh, for example, we were playing this video here, and we could, we could watch and we could talk to people on the screen there. Now you can see that there's a frame rate issue. I'm working on that. I need to get uh, some work done on my frame rate here. Uh, but other than that, you can see here, so I'm just playing this video, which is not playing properly now. Um, as soon as I move away from the YouTube video, you can see it actually just stops playing. But there we go. I'll switch it off again, and then we'll switch back over to my main camera. And you can see it, it, it's sort of really working really well. Um, now, unfortunately, I don't have a color for the, for the movement bubble um, attached depending on my skin. However, I do have something cool on this skin, for example, um, which I don't think you can see. You might be able to just about see it, right? Um, which is Raymond's hair. Oh, well, it, it's not bubbling, it's not bouncing around. Uh, but I did I did sort of set it up to bounce around. In fact, if we switch over to... You can see it's a little bit of movement. Um, there's some work to do on that, uh, a lot of work to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. You can see that the shoes that I've added have also got customization. So these are all changing uh, depending on whatever, uh, whatever skin I'm using. Um, which is all very cool, but unfortunately it doesn't have the sort of transition. So if I was to stay as Rayman, whee, you can see the transition bubble is always the same uh, sort of plain white bubble. Uh, now obviously you can see that there's an area on the left side now, so we can go over to there and you'll st see something um, completely outside of this project, right? So here we go, off to the left, whee! <laughs> And here we are. Um, in fact, if I jump over to seat number two and then move camera two, that's much better. Uh, so now we can see my little gallery area. I am going to work on these areas a little bit more, but uh, what I wanted to do here is actually talk about these, these uh, gallery pieces here. Uh, now I've been working on some professional rendering of my um, of my artworks and my uh, my games my game IPs right uh, you will notice almost immediately uh, that Project TX has a new logo I'm not going to zoom in on this stuff uh, we will show you that when the next Project TX video comes up uh, which hopefully will be this week coming um, so I've got a new logo I've got new design for everything I, I want everything to feel super duper clean super professional and uh, that's what we've got here so if I switch back to camera one here a little bit zoomed on there um, we can see 360 chicken has been professionally rendered here um, still some more artworks to do uh, but these are essentially proper going to be proper posters, right? So we've got 360 chicken. We've got project TX the tiny you'll notice that his head is actually using my uh, my current skin uh, so this uh, sort of talkative with the mouth, uh, you can't see it properly, but I'm not going to zoom in. Uh, we're going to look at that logo in the next video properly. Uh, and then we've got uh, Tubby Supercat, of course. So we've got the nice Tubby Supercat uh, design here. And again, he's pro professionally rendered, right? So these are not rendered in Unity like I normally would. Um, these are instead rendered uh, outside in, in, in a proper program, right? Uh, so these are professionally rendered. I've done the lighting and everything. I've, I've spent some real time making some very, very high quality artworks. The aim is for these to become actual posters, right? And it's very likely if I can get my art onto the website, I will hope to be getting these onto displays so that I can actually get them to, to people as well. Uh, so this would be actual displays you'd be able to buy from display. If I, if I can get the art uh, to work on there, um, it would, it, I don't know, their, their process might accept, might not accept. It is what it is, right? Uh, so that's why I have been rendering these out at super duper high quality. They're all very, very, very high resolution as well. Um, the high resolution renders, no, no upscaling going on here. These are pro properly rendered at super duper high res. Uh, I do have a third seat actually for this area, which is just for fun. 
so here we are on the on the uh, Mario Kart. Uh, I can't grab the wheel properly, but um, that seat functionality stuff, seat systems that I've been working on, I've been going to be working on those, make make everything sort of usable, and eventually the cart will be just something I can drive around in this area, right? So these are all little things that I want to be able to add functionally and just make them work regardless of uh, of what I'm doing or where I am in the game world. So, th th one thing to note is the reason I, I actually made the bubble effect and bubble transition is because you can see here, if I jump a, a large distance, things get really weird. Whee! See, it's, it's very weird to jump that sort of distance. Also, I've noticed that the, the circles do appear a little bit weird, so um, I might actually lift those circles up and uh, <laughs> place them higher than the seat because it does look a little bit awkward there. But um, I do have another section on the left hand side here. Wait, let me try and point. Camera tracking. Okay, finger tracking, I need to work on it. Leap motion uh, tracking, every tracking, I need to work on it, right? But the system is built so that I can now work with everything. But there we go. We have another s uh, space on the left here. In fact, I could have shown you this um, from the cart, actually. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to redo that. Redo that. Right? Back over here. Back over here. Well, let's jump over to seat number three. And then there we go. Right. So this is what I wanted to do. Camera over here. You can see my little uh, sort of uh, customizable zone, right? So here we go. Uh, let's switch over to customizable zone. And this is supposed to be intended to have like a, a large workable green screen in the background, uh, a functional sort of modifiable floor. So I could turn this into a disco floor and, and, and do some dancing here, or I can just sort of have the floor change into some other kind of land or anything like that. Maybe have some models and stuff generated into this into this area of, of the studio, right? So this is intended to be the customizable zone. Uh, there's only one seat right now. There's only one seating position. Obviously, I intend to have a third type of seat. Um, as you've known, as you've noticed, there's been two types of seats so far. So we've got the seated mode, and then we've got the standing point, like like I have right now. Uh, so standing positions. And what I want to do is have a full sort of controlled uh, seat mode as well. So we have that sort of third mode where I have an area which I can sort of walk around in, just sort of a circle, a radius around that position where I can move around like a game character and then of course I just have free roam mode as well which I haven't got uh, functional yet but uh, just being able to free roam around the room and again this is not going to be the only room this is designed to allow for a seamless transition between not only areas but also between rooms as well. Unfortunately, I don't have any rooms yet. Um, you'll notice that uh, there are some sort of directionality uh, things involved. So for example, from this area here, I can not just only go right, but I can actually go down and go straight to this area here, right? So I've just sort of laid it out in a way. Now you can't go backwards from here. You can't go down from here. And the reason being that basically I wanted this area behind me here uh, I wonder if I can get the camera there. So this area here, this area here, um, as you might sort of move past there. Um, but yeah, the, the area to the left of this, right? So just, just to the left of this, um, that area, I'm going to do some, some more stuff there as well. Maybe I'll have it like a, a sort of discussion area as well, where I can place things on the desk in front of me, have it, have it like a normal, or maybe a sort of awards shelf or something like that. There's going to be a lot more to come of course i need a uh, maybe maybe i can turn that into a proper seating area or uh, a gaming area uh, there needs to be a proper gaming area right it's very likely i'll just use uh, the old um uh, main discussion seat not this one but this one here i'll put a, a gaming uh, gaming console on the floor and uh, make it modifiable again i can swap out between the game consoles and stuff i was supposed to install my speakers here i didn't get around to it oh well <laughs> it is how it is right um but yeah oh i i did want to sort of um no actually i did show it right i did show the the, the working screen i already did oh well there we go uh, so yeah this it's currently quite empty but it is how it is there's going to be plenty more to come and of course 
we're going to get a new bubble, well, which is already designed. I've already got a bubble. Oh, my head cracking. Uh, <laughs> going crazy. Actually, I've got long hair, and the longer my hair grows, the worse the cracking goes. So th there we go. Um, it's not long. It's, it's like, it's just up to here, up to my eye. Um, I just need a haircut, but I don't really bother to get one while I'm in Germany. I, when I go home, I'll, I'll get one. Uh, but yeah, so Tubby doesn't have... Um, his uh, bubble functionality yet, he doesn't have any seating points outside of this area, so unfortunately he can't do any of that. But there's going to be some fun advanced functionality for, for Tubby as well, and then we're going to have some fun advanced functionality for me. Going to be lots of actions and stuff, everything that I can work on, and the ability to just bring people in and allow them to do uh, things within the world, right? From, from Twitch chat or from YouTube chat, whichever one is uh, is best right so there we go um what do you think of my new uh, transition system it took me a blooming week to write it uh, it took me a while and uh, yeah lots of stuff hopefully you like these new posters um things are getting really nice now it's it's uh, really looking good unfortunately i'm standing in front of the tubby poster there so better switch over to this one maybe we can leave it at this uh, at the sort of ankle uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully in the next video we can we can have a look at some new project tx stuff as well and then there's uh, there's some other stuff to come as well in, in fact this character model is something i want to talk about because this character model was designed for vr as you can see from the shaping um so obviously very much based on the rayman character um because the the sort of idea of having floating limbs turned out to be a very good idea for vr so i was thinking about some stuff um but anyways there you go um it really worked out very well for this uh, sort of character design where the ability to sort of just not have tracking pieces that look really weird um although one thing you you should notice i don't have my little arm wrists uh, for test tracking those were just for testing uh, but they will come back eventually so the little wrist uh, wrist uh, wristbands or wrist watches um from project tx in fact he's wearing it in this one a professionally rendered <laughs> wristwatch there uh, very very nice it, it, you'll see it when you see it right um but thank that's the end of this video anyway thanks very much for watching i will um see you in the next one let's get back to home position uh goodbye